I'm not sure, but I'm thinking this is going to be one of the easiest journals I ever made. <laughs> hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. So a few videos ago, I showed you my room and part of that was my closet over there and all of my beautiful Christmas stuff, all my washi tape, all my vintage pages, all my Christmas books, all of my Christmas stuff buried. I still want to play along in December and have some sort of creative project going. So I made this kit. This is the December Patreon gift, but I gave it out a little bit early because who likes to wait? So I'm just going to show you real quick the kit. We're going to whip this into a cute journal and then I'm going to be on my way because I got turkey prepping. I've got Thanksgiving Day stuff going on. So here are the fussy cuts, a couple separate ones. Something colorful, I needed a little bit of color, but I just love this buffalo plaid. And usually for Christmas, I always, almost always go vintage. And this year I wanted something different. And usually when I make a journal, I go fold the paper in half, book size. And this, this time I wanted something a little bit different as well. But the kit is available in both what I'm gonna do today, tall skinny and regular nine by six. So we'll put these away for now, but aren't they cute? Look at that little gingerbread dude all wrapped up in little gnomies. They're so cute. Some fun color washi. Of course, I had to include the paw prints. You know that. More gnomies. So these are just f fussy cuts. I can play with those later. Easiest kit. I printed it all out. It is a, I think it's a 10 page kit. I printed it all out and then I, Put the pages in random order and ran them through the printer again so that all of my papers are double-sided now and in no particular order although there is one that i want to make sure that this one goes on the back like this because i wanted the trees on the front and that cute little truck saying bye bye on his way out on the last page so i know that this is the last page now my original idea, because I wanted something a little bit hardier for the cover, was just to cover a manila folder uh, by printing extra pages that I wanted as the cover. I printed a copy of this one, a copy of each of these, and I was just going to cover a manila cover, a manila folder to make the cover. Because if I just fold everything in half, the pages are gonna stick out because all my paper is the same, unless I wanna trim my papers, and I don't wanna trim my papers. However, as happenstance would be, this beautiful Amazon package was just sitting there looking wonderful. And so I, I folded that in half, and looky looky, it was just an absolute perfect fit. So. People are doing their Christmas shopping early. My guess is you probably have one of these perfect papers. And if you don't, a manila folder will work just as well. In order to keep things simple and moving along today. And by the way, stick around at the end. I have some cute little happy mail that I want to show you. And a, and a Krabby Crafter a little mini rant about our post office. Because that's fun. If you're interested, that'll be at the end. So we get this stuff out of the way. And we're going to try to do this in real time, except I've already cut the papers in half that I want on the cover inside and out. I'm going to use my tape runner gun and this particular glue today. So I'm just going to use that in conjunction with my tape runner, but you don't need a tape runner. Your glue stick will work just fine. If you have a laser printer, your art glitter glue will work. Whatever you have will work fine. The reason I don't is because the wet glue will run all of my ink, so I have to use dry adhesive. Even though there is some moisture in this, I still have to be careful about how much I put on because I don't want my colors to run. So I decided that I wanted this little bit cleaner page, less snowflakes. I wanted these on the outside and this bit of a busier one on the inside. So I'm going to start on the inside just till I get my get my rhythm going because I got a million things to do. I'm not quite in the mental space for this, but it, I want to do this right now. So I'm putting the outside covers to the side. I'm going to work on the inside. Now these are, the envelope is just a little bit bigger and that's okay. I do want to take this bright yellow thing off here. I don't, 
save this for my daily glue book because it's part of my day today. Now I did trim this envelope a little bit just because when I tore it, I didn't really think about using it as a anything. I just tore the top. So I did neaten that up a little bit, but I am going to leave this open so that I have two pockets. And if I want, I can go ahead and cut two notches in here so that I remember that they're pockets. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I can do that when I'm decorating things, I think. Just take a punch and punch it out. Again, not necessary, really. So I want these. I'm just going to put them in the way that it came apart. Just like that. I'm going to put this in the middle. Where I know those papers are going to sit. I'm going to make sure that I get my edges really good because they just will keep lifting otherwise and I don't want to keep regluing things so I'm going to just make sure to get those edges really really well. The edges in the corners and I'm also going to wet these runs of tape just so that I have some wiggle room because I don't want anything sticking crooked. I want to be able to get it down nice and straight. I'm just going to eyeball it so that it's reasonably straight. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do this for all four sides of the cover. So I have stuff glued inside and outside of my cover. I'm going to put that aside for a few minutes. I've gone ahead and folded all of my papers that again I have printed borderless full size and then I ran one set through I printed it once put them all back together and then ran them through the printer again because the way my printer it offsets things and so if I want things to be the right way up and everything lining up properly I do it in two stages rather than printing two-sided it's, it's a little bit more time consuming but I get a better result so I did that, and as I folded these, this tree I folded so that they were outside. The second set of trees I folded so that they were on the inside. This one is an extra one. It was a misprint. I had stopped it from printing but and just got this little tiny bit up here, and so I just did one extra page and printed these trees just random. I now this one I know I want the front of my signature and I want that little truck to be the last page so this is going to be the first page and the rest the rest I don't care how it goes in really I just don't want the same exact papers right next to each other maybe I'll put the gnomes I'll put the gnomes as my center fold and even though I did it randomly when I put the second set when I put them through the second time to get the printed backs, I rearranged them and this printed the set. So whatever ended up on the back of something was totally random. And my gnomes both ended up on the same page. And that's fine. I think what I'm gonna do is take a nice fine marker. And because I printed these white gnomes on white, I'm just gonna go in and give them pom-poms on their hats. And maybe give them some funny beards. Simple, easy peasy. Just little squiggle marks. Nothing too complicated. I didn't try to make them all the same. Can even give them little, maybe little smiley faces if you want. Zhuzh them up a little bit. Might as well do them all while we're doing them. Oh, I got, oh, I got a whole bunch of gnomes here. Look at me go. That one's not a happy one. Got to have one grumpy, grumpy gnome in there. Zhuzhing up the gnomes is taking some extra time, but I think they're worth it. So these will be my inside page. So I'm going to say that. So I've got trees and pattern, pattern. I got a lot of patterns. And more trees. And you can always refold them. If it's too much pattern next to too much pattern, refold them. Do I want that? I might not. We'll see. 
let's see how we end up here. And remember, if you want a bigger journal, if you want more pages, just print out the ones you like the best. Print a couple extra. Just because it's a 10 page kit doesn't mean it can't be a 20 page journal. So let's see what we end up with. I wanted the trees on the front and the truck on the back. So I have that. And I wanted the gnomes in the centerfold and I have that. Let's see what the rest of it looks like before we put it all together and be done. So that looks all right. That's kind of fun. That looks kind of fun. A nice ride in the cute little car. And I like that the car is coming. It's early on in the in the story and it's coming in this way. So I really like that. This just reminds me of a nice cozy warm winter sweater, Christmas sweater. Pattern, pattern, a little bit different. Trees with, with a sweater pattern, two, two alike. That's okay, that's all right. Pattern on this side, trees on that side. I think I like it. There's our little gnomes. It's just that little whisper because it was a misprint, but I didn't want to waste it. I wanted to use it. So that just gives me one extra page in my journal. My gnome centerfold, gnomes in the back. I'm kind of blank here except for this little thing but i have lots of embellishments to add trees and sweater double pattern i think that's a fine i i like it so i i'm pretty happy with how this turned out but it, it's always changeable because we're not going to sew this in i'm just going to put it together give it a good squish give it some love with my bone folder pull my cover out my beautiful journal in there. I got my way cool baker's twine from the Dollar Tree. Just going to open to my center folds, my little gnomes, and I'm going to put my baker's twine in there. Get enough so that I can easily tie a bow. Make sure that it's in there pretty good and they're pretty tight. I'm gonna tie a knot before I tie the bow. It's not super tight, and that's all right. It doesn't really matter. Tie myself a nice little bow. Might not hurt to make this a double bow, a double knot, double bow. I don't know, tie the, tie the bow in a knot so it doesn't come undone on you. And I'm gonna cut these off. I could leave it. I could certainly leave it and add some charms. I'm going to leave it and add some charms, but I'm also going to take a little bit of extra, fold it in approximately half a couple times so that I just have now I have four small pieces and I'm just going to tie these around here just to jazz up that bow a little bit. So I have a big knot, tiny bow, but just a little bit of extra something. If I want, I can put charms on all of them and have kind of book bling. The beauty of this too is if I don't want it in the center, I can have that up at the top and have my charms hanging down. My journal is now complete. But for the phone call I got in the middle of this video, it probably took maybe under 20 minutes for sure. So now I can just work on this as is, or I can take the pages in and out, work on the pages flat, and then put, put it back in. I can add pages, I can take pages away. Remember I have these handy dandy little pockets up here. I can, I can tuck stuff in, I can, if I wanna fold these up, I can tuck those in till I'm ready to cut them up. You can also draw in your little pom-poms and beards on the little gnomes if you want. Cut these up, can add all kinds of things. If I wanted to have a pocket, Again, I don't have access to my Christmas stuff, so I'm just going to use a plain copy paper here. I'm going to fold it in half again, and I'm going to fold the bottom up just a little bit. I'm going to take this to my center fold for right now, and I'm going to just tuck this in there for right now. And when I cut, rough cut these, then I can stick those in here and everything I have. So tomorrow when I'm at Thanksgiving at my aunt's house, I can take this with me. I can fussy cut. I can take a little glue stick and glue some of these embellishments on some of the blank pages or here and there. If I want a little gnome that's sitting under the tree or whatever I want to do, I can grab this and go. There's plenty of room here to grow. So I can add layers of favorite wrapping paper if I want when that comes. I can add 
smaller Christmas cards that come, you know, the few that still come. There's lots and lots of room to grow with this. And it's super easy, clean, neat, fun. You don't have to have the envelope, but it sure would help. You can just use a manila envelope and make a cover. You know, it's the same. It's already the right size height-wise. You just have to cut it down to the, to the width that you want. And again, I made this kit in two sizes, the long, tall Sally that you see here and the regular book shape. And so you can make a journal like that. If you'd like, you can make both. You can shrink them down when you print and make a mini journal. If that's all you think you can do in December, by all means do that. You would put two pages per sheet and that would get you about half the size of your journal. So instead of having a journal this size, you would have a journal just by shrinking it down either shrinking it down. What I would do in the print queue is have it print two pages per sheet. And then when you trim it, this is the size you'll end up with. So lots and lots of options with this one simple kit. Please hop over to Patreon. I'll put a link in the description below or in a pinned comment if YouTube is not behaving. Now I promised you a little bit of a rant. Long time ago, when my niece got married, she sent out these fabulous invites and had all these vintage stamps on it. And ever since then, whenever I mail something to a junk journal friend of mine, I try to put a variety of stamps on it just because, because it's, you know, it gets the job done. It's still the right amount of postage, but it's way prettier than just a 32 cent pink printed out label, right? It's just character and fun. And we all like adding the stamps to. So I went to the post office to mail out one of the winners I believe it was to Catherine at my hillside garden she was she won a couple in a row and I asked the post dude if he would please put a variety of stamps on Stand that but instead of just a pink computer generated thing could you just put a variety of stamps to get us to that number could you do that well first he didn't understand then he was pissy because I asked him to do something out of the ordinary and he didn't have time now there wasn't anybody else in the post office I wasn't holding up the line there wasn't anyone else there it was just him and I well oh uh, I have to get extra stamps from over there I said I'll wait <laughs> oh okay never mind like just walk the four steps to the next booth get the fun stamps and come back. Well, then you had to get this calculator out and you had to do some high flutin math. And here's what the genius came up with. Yeah. No imagination whatsoever, this boy. Completely missed the point of the aesthetic. <laughs> He just, we want different stamps. And he missed the whole point of different stamps, too. Instead of a five cent stamp times 10, he could have put a, you know, a 20 cent stamp and a 15 cent stamp. No, that, that was beyond his scope. Couldn't be bothered to do that. I, I just don't get, I, oh, I just don't understand. So what I ended up doing was I bought a whole bunch of small stamps myself. Three cents, five cents, 20 cents, one cent, two cent, four cent, blueberries, grapes, teapots, plus the regular stamps so that I could put the regular stamp and I know that will cover it. And then a whole bunch of little stamps just for fun because it, it was too much to ask the postman. It just blew his little mind. Didn't get it any better. Happy mail. My friend Leanne sent me a gorgeous little card and it's got this fun stamp. It says, thank you in all hospital or medical related symbols. It just looks so cute. And I'll show you what she sent because he's so wonderful. Look at that little face, that little, super fear, little superhero smile and a whole bunch of fun Thanksgiving stickers to play with. So cute. Thank you, Leanne. And this came from Catherine at my hillside garden and I just absolutely love it first of all she said she was away she didn't bring her whole craft room with her so she was just using what she had and she did the collage the magazine collage fodder all these leaves are leaves that she's drawn on magazine 
pages as are the pumpkins and it says you can't celebrate fall without pumpkins and on the back it's got some wonderful washi tape some wonderful fall themed washi tape it's, it's very simple both of these things just absolutely made my day and i have a thanksgiving journal that i put stuff in each year and so i will be happily adding these to that or my happy mail journal which i'm happy to report that is getting nice and full so I hope that you have a lovely, lovely crafty day. And if you're celebrating Thanksgiving, bully for you. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Be kind to the Beastlies. It's going to be hustle and bustle. And they don't always understand that, especially if they live, you know, Bitsy and I live here in this quiet little place. It's just her and I 90% of the time is very quiet. And we're going to go tomorrow and there's going to be five dogs. And there's going to be a lot of adults. Yeah, I don't think, fingers crossed. No kids this time. No kids. Fingers crossed. But still a lot of adults, a lot of noise, a lot of cooking. My aunt got a margarita making machine, so I'm sure that will be running. A lot of noise, a lot of chaos that Bitsy's just not used to, you know? So I try to take extra care with her while we're there and make sure she's safe and comfortable and out of the eye of the storm, you know, just where she can be quiet and comfortable. Just can be considerate of them during the holidays just consider what they're used to and what they're being exposed to because it's usually very different love them up give them extra cookies Matek at the lake out for now <laughs>